Thank you. Okay, light your candles and we'll observe the minute silence. Thank you. We're now moving to the part of the vigil where we'll be rededicating the beacon of hope. We're going to reflect on the past, talk about the present and think about the future. <coughs> During the early 1980s and the early days of the HIV epidemic, there was little hope for anyone that was diagnosed with HIV. Those times were characterised by fear, helplessness, sadness and outrage. It was a time when mis misinformation and discrimination and homophobia were rife. Very little was known about the disease and there was no way to treat it. People were ignorant. They were very scared and the media fueled hysteria and discrimination. Looking back, it's important that we remember and acknowledge those early activists that achieved so much for us today. They tirelessly campaigned for better information, treatment and services to support those that were affected. The services we have now across Greater Manchester would not be here today apart from that tireless work by those early activists who responded to the growing number of people that were dying and becoming infected by HIV. Activism has pushed researchers to develop medications to treat HIV and it has fought and they've fought to make those medications accessible to people regardless of their ability to pay or their immigration status. They've also insisted that those HIV prevention messages and prevention interventions were culturally appropriate and appropriate for people where they were at. And most importantly, probably, they have demanded that HIV positive people are at the heart of any decisions made about them. During 1987, there was a number of key developments that took place. The first antiretroviral drug, AZT, was developed. HIV testing was introduced across the UK and the first pilot needle exchange schemes were introduced. Also that year, the UK government introduced the first Don't Die of Ignorance campaign. It was fairly controversial at the time, um, but it tried to address some of the stigma that was faced by the gay community uh, and let people know that HIV could affect anyone. During 1991, a group of artists in New York created the Red Ribbon, and it continues today to stand for hope and the universal symbol of awareness for people living with HIV. By the end of that year, AIDS had killed more men aged between 25 and 44 than any other condition. There was new hope by 1997 when combination therapy was introduced and this was a new standard for people living with HIV and drastically cut the death rate. And then in 2000, the beacon of hope was erected and as far as we know, it's the UK's only memorial for people living with HIV. I've been thinking about the present 
and we have seen some really big changes which have had a significant impact on the HIV landscape both locally and worldwide. The advent of increased access to PEP and PrEP, HIV prevention drugs, and the recent PrEP trials which are now open for recruitment in Manchester, Bolton, Stockport and Tameside clinics as well as in other areas across the UK. The groundbreaking research results resulting in us being able to talk confidently about undetectability and the implications of U equals U, undetectable equals untransmittable. This is one of the strongest weapons we have in our fight against HIV stigma and we need to be talking about it. U equals U. When the combined present situation of PrEP, PEP and U equal U means that we could end HIV transmission in a generation. We've already seen significant drops in new diagnoses amongst MSM communities across the London clinics. But greater, in Greater Manchester, transmission statistics are not yet going down. Worldwide, progress is also being made in terms of access to treatment. With over 18 million people around the world being reported to be accessing HIV treatment in 2016, compared to only 1 million in 2000. Still a long way to go, but there is progress. National HIV Testing Week is now a regular and established event in the calendar, meaning that testing is now easier and more accessible than ever before. This week, panels from the UK AIDS Memorial Quilt have been displayed at Westminster Hall in recognition of the intervention of Parliament in the battle against HIV and to mark that it is 30 years since the Don't Die of Ignorance campaign was championed by Lord Fowler, the then Secretary of State for Health and Social Services. It is encouraging to know that a significant number of MPs visited the display, but more work is still needed to challenge the stigma, which still remains a significant issue for many people who are living with HIV. I'm Rob Cookson from the LGBT Foundation, and I'm going to talk about the future. Combination prevention means we now have all the tools at our disposal to end all new cases of HIV. This is an opportunity we, us, have to grasp. So we need to use everything we can at our disposal, PrEP, PEP, regular testing and prompt treatment to end HIV. And at the heart of this is us as a community leading these solutions and absolutely leading the way. So we hope and indeed we must reach the UN AIDS 1990 target. By 2020, 90% of all people will know their HIV status. 90% of all people living with HIV will have access to HIV treatment. And 90% of people will have an undetectable viral load. And we need to make sure that testing is as easy as possible. That means making sure that testing in lots of different ways, online testing, testing within community, and testing within clinics. We need to shout from the rooftops the benefits of testing and encourage everyone that we know to test and test regularly. We also need to make sure that people newly diagnosed with um, HIV get access to treatment. That means highlighting the importance of prompt treatment and adherence to treatment. And we absolutely need to make sure that access to HIV treatment is for everyone who needs it, no matter whoever and wherever they are. So we know that regular testing and prompt treatment play an important part in ending HIV. But we also know there's another game changer, and that's PrEP. And we heard about PrEP before in one of the brilliant speeches before. Um, all the combination prevention, all the things that we can do to prevent HIV, they're the things that, as a community, we absolutely need to be shouting from the rooftops about. But it's not just the different tools, it's not just the different ways that we can prevent HIV. That's just one part of the story. The other part of the story is challenging the stigma that people living with HIV face. It's also about challenging the discrimination that people living with HIV face. And we can all play a role in that. 
The voices of people living with HIV is absolutely critical. But of course there is hope, there's real hope. And that's by working together we can ensure that more people get access to, to treatment. It's also by working together that we can ensure regular HIV testing becomes the norm. It's still too hard for some people to access HIV testing. We need to be doing much more about that. And of course, Greater Manchester has a proud history of leading the way in the fight against stigma, discrimination and finding ways to address HIV. And that's something we should be proud about. But it's now Greater Manchester's turn to have a proud ambition, a strong ambition, as we heard from Andy Burnham before, to end all new cases of HIV within a generation. That is absolutely within our grasp and we need to go for that. So we need to shout this ambition from the rooftops. We can and we will grasp this opportunity. Together, we can, we must and we will end all new cases of HIV within a generation. I'm uh, Paul Fairweather. I was an activist in the earliest days of the epidemic in Manchester and I'm living with HIV. As we stand together in Manchester on this World AIDS Day, we remember that the beacon of hope was created as Manchester's response to HIV. We celebrate the fact that activists in this city did so much in the earliest years of the epidemic to ensure that people diagnosed with HIV were properly supported. As we stand here by the beacon of hope, we remember people we knew and those we didn't know who have died as a result of HIV-related illnesses. And as we stand by the beacon of hope, we pledge our support to those we know that are living with HIV today. We also pledge to challenge stigma, HIV stigma, and to talk openly about HIV. We take this opportunity to thank everyone who brought the beacon of hope into being in the first place, especially Roy Jackson for his dedication that never waned. We thank all those people and organisations who have supported the renovation of the beacon with grants and donations, especially Manchester City Council, Manchester Pride and the many individuals who contributed individually. Our beacon of hope has shone brightly for many years. It reminds us of the people we have lost and of our HIV history. It reminds us that we have come a long way, but it reminds us also that there is still much to do. It reminds us that we all have a part to play. Much has changed since the idea for the Beacon of Hope was conceived. With early diagnosis and effective treatment, people living with HIV today are getting on with their lives. More people around the world than ever before have access to life-saving treatment. Laws are in place to protect people living with HIV. We can end HIV in a generation. As we rededicate the Beacon of Hope, we pledge to play our part in making the day a reality when we can place the last plaque on the timeline which reads, In this year, HIV was beaten.